Welcome to Celeb Memorial TV. Join us as we honor and remember the lives of famous personalities who have touched our hearts. Stay updated with the latest news, tributes, and stories about the stars we've lost. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Let's pay tribute to the legacies of these unforgettable icons. Andre Brower, who passed away at the age of 61, was a gifted and respected actor whose remarkable talent and dignified presence left an enduring impact on both television and film. His death, attributed to lung cancer, marks the end of a distinguished career that spanned decades and touched the lives of countless fans and colleagues. Born in Chicago, Andre's early life was shaped by his strong work ethic and his passion for the arts. After earning a degree in theater from Stanford University and honing his craft at the Juilliard School, he embarked on a career that would see him rise to the top of his profession. His early roles in Shakespeare in the Park productions, such as Much Ado About Nothing and Coriolanus, showcased his extraordinary range and set the stage for his future successes. Andre Brauer gained widespread recognition for his role as Detective Frank Pembleton in Homicide, Life on the Street. His portrayal of the intense, principled detective earned him critical acclaim, including a Primetime Emmy Award, and solidified his reputation as one of the finest actors of his generation. He brought a similar gravitas to his role as Captain Raymond Holt in the beloved comedy series Brooklyn Nine-Nine, where his deadpan humor and impeccable timing endeared him to a whole new audience. In addition to his television work, Brower's film roles in Glory, Primal Fear, City of Angels, and The Mist further demonstrated his versatility and depth as an actor. His ability to bring complexity and humanity to every character he portrayed made him a standout in every project he undertook. Beyond his professional achievements, Andre was known for his kindness, humility, and dedication to his craft. His passing is a great loss to the entertainment industry but his legacy will continue to inspire future generations of actors and audiences alike. Andre Brager will be remembered not only for his extraordinary talent, but also for the warmth and grace with which he lived his life. Al Adels, who passed away at the age of 87, was a towering figure in the world of basketball, both literally and figuratively. His legacy, deeply rooted in the Golden State Warriors, is one of unparalleled dedication, leadership, and humility. Known affectionately as the Destroyer for his tenacious playing style, Adels was much more than a fierce competitor on the court. He was the very heart and soul of the Warriors for over six decades. Drafted by the then Philadelphia Warriors in 1960, Adels quickly made his mark as a player. He was a key figure in one of the most iconic moments in NBA history, scoring 17 points in Wilt Chamberlain's legendary 100-point game. Over his 11-season playing career, Adelis became known not only for his athleticism and skill, but also for his unwavering commitment to his team in the game of basketball. However, it was as a coach, and later as an executive, that Adels truly solidified his place in NBA history. His 13-plus seasons as head coach were highlighted by leading the Warriors to a stunning NBA championship in 1975, a victory that remains one of the greatest upsets in the league's history. His impact as a coach went beyond wins and losses. He was a mentor, a strategist, and a symbol of integrity. Adel's influence extended into the front office, where his keen eye for talent helped shape the future of the Warriors. His contributions to the game were recognized with multiple Lifetime Achievement Awards, culminating in his induction into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 2019. Beyond his basketball achievements, Adels was revered for his grace, humility, and commitment to his community. He was more than just a coach or a player. He was a guiding light, a mentor, and a true champion in every sense of the word. Al Adels leaves behind a profound legacy that will continue to inspire and influence the basketball world for generations to come. His life was a testament to the power of perseverance, integrity, and the impact one person can have on an entire community. He will be deeply missed, but his spirit will live on in the hearts of all who knew him. Richard Simmons, who passed away at the age of 76, left behind a legacy as one of America's most beloved and energetic fitness icons. Known for his infectious enthusiasm and unwavering commitment to helping others lead healthier lives, 
Richard Simmons was a true pioneer in the world of fitness and wellness. Born Milton Teagle Simmons in New Orleans, Louisiana on July 12, 1948, Richard's journey to fame was as unique as his vibrant personality. Struggling with obesity during his youth, he understood the challenges faced by those seeking to lose weight and dedicated his life to creating an inclusive and supportive fitness community. His passion for health and fitness led him to open his own gym, Slimmons, in Beverly Hills, which became a sanctuary for those seeking a healthier lifestyle. Simmons's larger-than-life persona quickly captured the hearts of millions through his television appearances, workout videos, and public engagements. His Sweat into the Oldies series became a cultural phenomenon in the 1980s, making exercise fun and accessible to people of all shapes and sizes. With his trademark sequined tank tops and candy-striped shorts, Simmons' message was clear. Fitness should be joyful, and everyone deserves to feel good about themselves. Beyond the gym, Richard Simmons used his platform for advocacy, including promoting non-competitive physical education in schools. His influence extended beyond fitness as he became a fixture on television and radio, bringing his motivational spirit to late-night shows and inspiring countless individuals to take charge of their health. Despite his retreat from public life in 2014, Richard remained a cherished figure, with fans remembering him for his kindness, warmth, and dedication to making the world a healthier place. His sudden passing after a fall at his home shocked and saddened many, but his legacy as a fitness guru and motivational leader will continue to inspire future generations. Richard Simmons was more than just a fitness instructor. He was a beacon of positivity, a tireless advocate for wellness, and a beloved figure who made the world a brighter place with his infectious energy and compassion. Shelley Duvall, who passed away at the age of 75 due to complications from diabetes, was a truly unique and captivating presence in the world of film and television. Best known for her distinctive roles in a variety of genres, Shelley's legacy is one of creativity, vulnerability, and undeniable charm. Born in Fort Worth, Texas on July 7, 1949, Shelley Duvall was discovered by director Robert Altman, who was instantly taken by her unconventional beauty and charismatic personality. This serendipitous meeting led to a prolific collaboration with Altman, through which Duvall shone in films like McCabe and Mrs. Miller, Thieves Like Us, and the critically acclaimed Nashville. However, it was her role in Altman's Three Women that truly showcased her talent, earning her the Best Actress Award at the Cannes Film Festival. Shelley's career was defined by her willingness to embrace eccentric and challenging roles, most notably her portrayal of Wendy Torrance in Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Despite the emotional and physical toll the role took on her, Duvall's performance has since become iconic, solidifying her status as one of cinema's unforgettable scream queens. Her portrayal of olive oil in Altman's Popeye further demonstrated her versatility, bringing a beloved cartoon character to life with her signature quirkiness. Beyond acting, Shelley was a pioneer in children's television, creating and producing the beloved series Fairy Tale Theater, which introduced classic fairy tales to a new generation. Her dedication to storytelling and nurturing young minds left a lasting impact, and her work continues to resonate with audiences today. Despite stepping away from the public eye for many years, Shelley Duvall's influence never waned. Her return to acting in the Forest Hills was a testament to her enduring passion for the craft. Shelley Duvall was more than just an actress, she was an icon of authenticity and imagination. Her contributions to film and television will be remembered for their depth, originality, and the way they continue to inspire future generations of artists and audiences alike. Happy Trom, who passed away at the age of 86, was a cherished figure in American folk music, leaving behind a rich legacy that spanned over six decades. Known for his profound influence on the Greenwich Village music scene of the 1960s and the Woodstock community in the 1970s and 1980s, Happy's contributions to folk music were as enduring as they were impactful. Born on May 9, 1938, in the Bronx, New York City, Happy, whose real name was a family nickname, found his passion for music at a young age. As a teenager, he was a frequent participant in the folk gatherings at Washington Square Park, 
where he absorbed the vibrant musical culture that would shape his career. After graduating from New York University, Trom quickly established himself as a vital part of the burgeoning folk scene. Happy Trom's career began with a historic recording session in 1962, where he contributed to the album Broadside Ballads, Volume 1, alongside folk legends like Bob Dylan and Pete Seeger. His group, the New World Singers, recorded the first released version of Dylan's iconic Blowin' in the Wind and the first recording of Don't Think Twice, It's All Right. These recordings captured the spirit of a generation and solidified Trom's place in the annals of American folk music. Trom's collaboration with his brother Artie resulted in several beloved albums, including Happy and Artie Trom and Doubleback. The duo's music was a heartfelt blend of blues, folk, and Americana, earning them a devoted following. As a solo artist, Happy continued to explore and expand his musical horizons, all while teaching countless others through his innovative homespun music instruction series. Happy's work with Bob Dylan, including his contributions to Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits Volume 2 and the Bootleg series, further highlighted his versatility as a musician. His ability to seamlessly blend guitar, banjo, and harmony into Dylan's recordings is a testament to his skill and musical intuition. Happy Trom will be remembered not only for his musical achievements, but also for his warmth, generosity, and dedication to preserving and sharing the folk tradition. His contributions to the world of music will continue to inspire future generations of musicians and folk enthusiasts alike. Lou Dobbs, who passed away at the age of 78, was a prominent figure in American media and political commentary. Known for his strong opinions and unwavering stance on issues like immigration and trade, Dobbs left an indelible mark on the world of journalism and political discourse. Born in Childress, Texas on September 24, 1945, Dobbs rose from humble beginnings to become one of the most recognizable voices in conservative media. After graduating from Harvard University with a degree in economics, he began his career in journalism, eventually joining CNN at its inception in 1980. As the host and managing editor of Moneyline, later renamed Lou Dobbs Tonight, Dobbs became known for his insightful coverage of business and economic news, earning him numerous accolades, including a Lifetime Achievement Emmy Award and a Peabody Award. Dobbs's career was not without controversy. His outspoken views on immigration, trade, and his promotion of the birther conspiracy theory earned him both staunch supporters and vocal critics. Despite the polarizing nature of his opinions, Dobbs remained a central figure in the media landscape, influencing public opinion and shaping political debate for decades. In addition to his work on CNN, Dobbs hosted Lou Dobbs Tonight on the Fox Business Network from 2011 until 2021. His unwavering support for former President Donald Trump and his coverage of issues like the 2020 presidential election solidified his place as a leading voice in conservative circles. Even after his television show was canceled, Dobbs continued to engage with his audience through his podcast, The Great America Show. Beyond his professional achievements, Dobbs was a devoted family man. He is survived by his wife, Debbie Segura, and their four children. His legacy is one of a complex figure who was both revered and reviled, but who undeniably left a lasting impact on American media and politics. As the nation reflects on his contributions, Lou Dobbs will be remembered for his dedication to his beliefs and his role in shaping the conversation on some of the most pressing issues of our time. Breaking news of the day, News 1. Christina Applegate recently opened up on her podcast Messy about a concern she had while filming the 2004 comedy classic Anchorman involving co-star Will Ferrell's marriage. Applegate revealed that she once suspected Ferrell might be having marital issues due to his wife Vivica Pauline's frequent absences from cast social events. However, Ferrell cleared the air during the podcast, explaining that Pauline was pregnant with their first child Magnus at the time, which limited her ability to join the gatherings. Farrell humorously recalled the situation, asking Applegate, Christina, do you remember how you thought I was having marriage problems? Applegate admitted to her earlier concerns, but expressed relief upon learning the real reason behind Paulin's absence. She praised the couple as 
couple goals across the world and highlighted the strong supportive relationships among the Anchorman cast, including Steve Carell and Paul Rudd. Reflecting on his long-standing relationship with Paul and Farrell shared that they have been together since the summer of 1991 and are about to celebrate their 24th wedding anniversary. He also fondly recounted their early friendship, which eventually blossomed into a romance, underscoring the deep bond they share. News 2. Pat Williams, the visionary co-founder of the Orlando Magic and a towering figure in the NBA for over five decades, has passed away at the age of 84 due to complications from viral pneumonia. Williams, known for his boundless energy and innovative ideas, played a pivotal role in bringing professional basketball to Orlando, leaving an indelible mark on both the sports industry and the community. Williams began his NBA career in 1968 with the Philadelphia 76ers and later made significant contributions to the Chicago Bulls and Atlanta Hawks. However, his legacy was truly cemented when he led the effort to establish an NBA team in Orlando. The Magic began playing in 1989, forever transforming Central Florida's sports landscape. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver honored Williams, saying, There is no Orlando Magic without Pat Williams. He was a beacon of energy and optimism, beloved by everyone in the basketball community. Beyond basketball, Williams was also a strong advocate for bringing Major League Soccer and Major League Baseball teams to Orlando. A passionate runner, Williams completed 58 marathons and authored over 100 books. After being diagnosed with multiple myeloma in 2011, he became a dedicated fundraiser for cancer research, supporting organizations like the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation. Williams is survived by his wife Ruth and 19 children including 14 adopted from abroad. His legacy of resilience, community service, and a deep love for sports will continue to inspire generations.